Hello my friends, welcome back to my channel for day two of Vlogmas. Today I'm going to talk about the one topic that I get more questions about both in person, in my personal life, and on social media, and that is my premature gray hair. I will insert some pictures here of what my hair used to look like when it was all dark. I've had very, very dark hair since I was about 18 months old. I didn't get hair until very late in the game, uh, but my hair has always been almost black. Before I started coloring it, it was about as dark brown as you can get without it just being black, like a level two and a half, three. Uh, and I started going gray pretty early. So if you are interested to know more about my gray hair transition in my 20s, just keep watching. So going back to before I found my first gray hairs, as I mentioned just a second ago in the intro, my hair was super dark. It was like as dark brown as you could possibly be without it being black like my shirt. Um, always very cool toned and glossy and I always knew that I would go white one day because that's just how people in my family are. My dad has the same hair color as me. Uh, naturally and his hair is a hundred percent white now so I always knew that that was gonna be my destiny but I didn't expect to start finding gray hairs at 15 or 16 years old uh, I started out by finding one or two here or there right around in here and at first I would cover my gray hair with black mascara because they were just right here in the front so I would just cover them up and as they started working their way back on my hairline I decided to asked my mom if we could start dyeing my hair. We did demi-permanent at first, and then eventually my grays became so resistant that we had to switch to a permanent hair dye, which over time kind of lightened my hair. I know dye doesn't lighten color, but as it would oxidize, it would get lighter on the ends. So I ended up with more of a level four-ish hair uh, more of a rich chocolatey brown rather than my cool ashy super dark brown that I had naturally which you can see throughout my base now is that super dark ashy color this here is all natural hair I have finally gotten rid of the dyed ends about three or so weeks ago I my hair was down to about right here and I cut off all of, well, I didn't cut it off. I went and had a professional cut it off. Um, but I was so excited and happy to get rid of those ratty dyed oxidized ends. So, like I said, I found my first grays here. And you can see here, that's where the biggest concentration of the gray is. Um, but I also have behind here. Behind each ear, I have a solid patch of white. And it's all scattered throughout as well. The only place that I don't see any um, grays whatsoever is right above this eyebrow, directly above it. There's a patch of just black still. So, that's interesting to me. As for my why, people ask me all the time, what made you so anxious to get rid of the dye. Well, I had said for a long time that I was tired of dyeing my hair. When you have such dark hair and such white roots coming in, I would get maybe 10 days to two weeks out of a dye before I could see my roots. And it really bothered me because I felt like one, I was inauthentic and two, why am I spending all this money for 10 good days? So I told myself once Thomas and I got engaged that I was done dyeing my hair after our wedding. So I had one last dye nine days before our wedding. My hair looked fantastic on our wedding day and I started seeing my roots again on our honeymoon. So it was the right time to do it for me. I'm also pretty allergic to hair dye. Most people's scalp is allergic to hair dye. Um, but mine would swell really bad and it would itch and flake um, in the days after I got my hair dyed and it would go back to normal right before my next 
after appointment. So I would only get a few good does out of my scalp and I just decided I was done doing all of that. So now I only go to the hair dressers when I need a haircut, which up until now has been pretty frequently because I've been trimming here and there and getting a couple big cuts uh, in preparation for the last big chop, which was, like I said, three weeks ago. And uh, we save a lot of money that way because I'm not getting my hair colored every six weeks. It is so much healthier. Um, it's thicker. Granted, I am pregnant. I know that your hair looks really great when you're pregnant, generally speaking. But um, it just feels more intact, if that makes sense. So that's why I did it. People ask me all the time, too. Is that really your natural hair color? Yes. This is 100% virgin hair. It grew from my scalp, and this is just, this is how my hair looks now. Um, like I said, I'm 28, almost 29, and this is my hair. I'm gonna grab some products and show everybody how I take care of my gray hair. So, now that I've got this gray hair, how do I take care of it? What's changed about my hair in general? Lots. A lot of things have changed about my hair in general. So, for starters, because I'm, I'm not sure if it's because I'm not dyeing my hair as often or because it's virgin hair or what, my hair does not really get as greasy as it used to. Um, it used to get like stringy greasy and I think it's because my scalp was so irritated and imbalanced all the time. So, while it doesn't get as greasy as it used to, I have also lost my curl. My hair was naturally pretty curly my entire life. Um, most of the time I did straighten it, but here recently I had started using the curly girl method a little bit more and I just found that the more my roots grew out, the less curl I had. Instead, now I have these baby hairs at my scalp here that are um, very wiry, like they ch -ch 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 -ch, like a little lightning bolt and they stand straight up. So I do still have some wave. I can achieve a wavy look with my hair, especially since I cut off so much of it. There's not as much weight, but it's not as curly as it used to be, sadly. So I try to get it as straight and smooth as I possibly can, just so it looks a little bit better to me. And I will show you the products that I use the most. I start off with every other shampoo I use the holy grail of purple shampoos in my opinion. I know there are more expensive uh, and more professional quality purple shampoos out there but this is um, Clairol Shimmer Lights and it has never done me wrong so far. It gets my whites super silver and bright and I appreciate that. Any gray haired person or really any blonde will probably tell you the last thing you want is dingy yellow straw hair when it's supposed to be bright and glossy. And especially coming from someone with dark hair, I have always had really glossy, shiny hair. That's just how dark hair is most of the time. So, highly recommend purple shampoo if you have gray hair. I'll show you what the inside of it looks like. I mean, it's truly like purple. Let me. Yeah, it will stain your shower. It will stain your skin. <laughs> it does come off eventually, but use caution when you're using it. So I'm just gonna wipe that off on my pants. Um, it does have kind of a chemically smell, but it's worth it because it really helps your hair I think and it's kind of clarifying as well so it removes all of the buildup and keeps your hair looking nice. The second thing that I do is this OGX Silk Blowout. It is um yeah OGX Protecting and Silk Blowout Quick Drying Thermal Spray. I like it a lot. It helps with the wiry baby hairs at the top and it doesn't take a whole lot of it especially with short hair so um, I do this right before I dry and it's really really helpful with protecting from the heat that I need to get it straightened out 
Then I dry my roots with my handy dandy hot tools uh, Jet Dry 2200. Let me just untangle it here. I do use the concentrator nozzle. It comes with a concentrator and a diffuser. I use the concentrator and I use it right at my uh, part to get those baby hairs. And I'll take my paddle brush and I'll kind of guide with the paddle brush. I look ridiculous, but it works. It does what it's supposed to do. When I'm done with that and my roots, then I use this handy dandy, it's like a air, hair dryer brush uh, from Revlon. It's pretty affordable. I gave my mom one for Christmas a couple years ago. I think she really likes it. Mom, you can tell me if that's not the case. But it really gets the under layers super smooth and it gets pretty hot. So, hence the thermal spray. You're going to need a heat protectant. But it gets everything smoothed out and bouncy. So it's not just blah. Highly recommend. Once I'm done with that, like I said, I do still have some wave in my hair. So I will go over it with my, this is a Hot Tools hair straightener. It's from Ulta, several years old. I keep waiting for it to die so I can get something new and fancy and it just won't. So it's great for your buck, but uh, it goes all the way up to 450 degrees. I don't use it anywhere near that hot. But this patch back here especially likes to flip straight out like this. So I'll just go over everything really quick with the straightener. And it smooths everything all the way out like I like it. And then, of course, a good quality hairspray is going to do a lot for you. Especially with those flyaway baby hairs at the top. I have used Kenra Volume 25 for a very long time on the recommendation of a YouTuber blogger that I follow named Kate Bryan at the Small Things blog. You should check her out as well. This stuff is great and it really holds. So that's how my process has changed. Um, I definitely think the biggest change for me is the change in texture, but the health of my scalp has been so worth it. Do you have gray hair? How do you take care of your gray hair? Is there a better purple shampoo than this that I should really give a try? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, before you go, hit that subscribe button. Give me a like. Let me know what you liked about the video and what you didn't. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow for day three. Bye.